story point. is nothing but our story points are nothing but points given to a specific story now the points given to a specific story are nothing but an estimate of the size of the story now the size of the story can be expressed in multiple units so size can be expressed in the units of story points or it could be expressed in terms of t-shirt size or story point size now as we understand that this is an estimate of a size it indicates that we are looking at the complexity of the work of the requirements in fact the the work that has been replicated or identified is how complex is it so we can look at this in terms of the Stacy diagram as it's a requirement and technology. Now, how far, how far is this from the understanding, clarity, and how far is it technology? So something that is listed down here in a complex zone, we know we cannot uh, indicate the complex zone with an effort so we use what is called as estimation by relative sizes so in order to come up with this point estimation which is nothing but identifying the complexity of the work done now in a complex zone it is very difficult to identify the size so what we do is we use comparison so we use a technique, technique of comparison. Now, what is this technique of comparison? The technique of comparison is looking at an existing item. So we have a reference. Now, the reference is used for comparison. Which means, like our meter scale, we need to have a reference of, let's say if you have a story point, usually the reference scale is one, two, three, five, Eight, thirteen, twenty, forty, and hundred. So now, what we do is let us assume you need to uh, size or find the size with with the a unit of story point. In such case, we have a story that needs to be sized. And what we do is we compare this with different reference that has already been available. So the reference that has already been available, we compare it with the reference scale. Now, as we start comparing the reference scale, we look out for how, how complex this is with respect to the technology, uh, with respect to the requirement understanding and the technology of implementing with reference to the reference scale. And if the team feels this particular reference item 
is very similar to the complexity of the item that is identified as three, then this particular uh, story gets a size of three because because there is a because it is similar to reference scale three in complexity. And this reference scale is mutually agreed. So because it is mutually agreed, so everybody has to agree for the same. In case, let's assume there is a team member who thinks that this has to be on a reference scale of say five and someone else thinks that this has to be on a reference scale of let's say 13 and most of the teams most of the team members think that this is of a reference scale three now it's a good exercise for the whole team it's a good exercise for the whole team to ensure that these two people have a conversation so that they would be able to talk about why this person thinks it is three and why this person thinks it is 13 while rest of the people think it is three and through this conversation the result of this conversation the result is everyone would would refer to same size and the conversation would clarify the need of the requirements. Hence, if you now look at the whole ecosystem, story point is nothing but a relative size estimation technique for the whole team. So if you change the team, then the team members are going to have a different number. Now, if you change the reference scale, then the team members are going to have a different uh, unit. So the story point is specific to the team and specific to the reference points. Okay, so I hope this gives a, a indication of what is a story point and when. Is similar to the run rate in cricket. So you can think of velocity as let's assume this is a time axis, and if you consider these intervals as sprints, then the velocity is is nothing but total total work done by total number of sprints which gives you an average work done by the team so now let us look at this time axis. So on, on this sprint, let's say this is the first sprint. If the team does work, say, 10 
items or 10 units of work in the second in the second the team does eight units of work eight units of work and in the third the team does six units of work in the team does 12 units of work and then maybe here it is eight four now if you look at the the this total work done by the team now the total work done by the team is nothing but 10 so we need to have 10 plus 8 plus 6 plus 12 plus 8 plus 4 divided by 6 so this is approximately equal to uh, 20 30 40 48 48 divided by 6 so this is 6 8 of 48 so this is equal to 48 now we have velocity of the team as eight units per sprint similar to the run rate what does this indicate what is the use use of this the first use of this is if you know the velocity and if the team is working towards a specific release let's assume case one where the release date is fixed and the release happens after say let's assume 10 sprints in that case the velocity of velocity equal to 8 units per sprint will give a result of from now from now till the release we will be able to do approximately 8 units of work per sprint, 80 units of work for the release. So this is the total. And let's assume a case, case two, where scope is fixed. Which means you need to deliver, let's say, 120 units of work. Now, with the same velocity of eight story points, with the same velocity of eight story points, this infers 120 divided by eight, which is nothing but. One point two ten minutes. So we need to get one it's approximately or equal to. 15 sprints which means if you have the time now this is now at this point in order to finish all 120 units of work we will need 15 sprints and 
this is when we would be able to release this two. So I hope you understood. I hope you understood that the relationship between the velocity and the forecasting is predominantly focused on the future. How much the team is going to do for the future. So, if you look at the velocity, uh, most of the organization tend to use the velocity to depict how much the team is going to do in the very immediate next sprint. And if the focus focus is short term, then velocity should be should be used as just guideline uh, for planning. Example, if at all the velocity is used for predicting the next upcoming sprint, in that case, based on the velocity of eight units per sprint and looking at the team's lowest as four, highest as 12, and somewhere, somewhere in the the team has somewhere in this the team has the best of the work done. So if the team plans the plan is done for anything between say four to twelve units, the team is good to go. But predominantly the team would take something which is more consistent. So I would pick up, in this case, I would pick up approximately eight units to six to eight units, eight to nine units for our work. And this eight to nine units is not because of the velocity, it is because of the range in which the team is more consistent. Now, let us try to apply this concept of velocity to the teams when they're working in a spread. So we understood that the team does their work and velocity is a reflection of what is done at the end of the sprint. So similar to the run rate, the score has been done. So what happens is at the end, at the end, of the sprint, everything that is done 100% will be accounted towards velocity. Now, if the team is looking at velocity and does the planning, then they will fall under a trap because velocity is predominantly for long-term prediction. Let's assume a situation. The team members the team members together they plan they plan for improvement, continuous improvement. And this continuous improvement would be something like skills improvement. Let's say say skills. skills something that is missing in the teams so everybody wants to learn the skill or one of the person in the team wants to learn the skill now if this team decides to learn the skill in the in their sprint 
So let's assume that they are trying to learn this within a sprint. So from the product backlog, so from the product backlog, the to-do list of items, the product backlog, the team might choose some of the items that add to the sprint goal, which is nothing but a functionality. And based on the sprint goal, the team would come up with the plan. And this plan, is nothing but their sprint backlog. So this is sprint backlog. And now the skill that needs to be learned can be part of the sprint backlog as the team's plan. Now, what is the impact of this? While the team pulled out these items, which are from the product backlog, the team spent some amount of time about learning the skill. Now, the problem is many teams or the management thinks that the management thinks, thinks that the team velocity, team velocity is low, is reducing because these skills that they were working on are additionals and if this was not done then the team could have done more in fact that's a wrong way of thinking because these are part of the continuous improvement and has to be part of the team's plan so as a result yes what happens is let's assume the previous case when the team had different uh, different values for their sprints and the velocity velocity was equal to approximately eight units per sprint now because of this two they are going to have lesser work done now even though work done is less let's assume that they were able to do five units of work in the the seventh sprint. So remember we we had in this case we had six sprints and in the six sprints the velocity average uh, the average velocity was velocity itself is an average so the velocity was eight the velocity was eight now what we are going to do is we are going to add all those things so so let us look at this if if we add eight to the five to this, which is the current team's work done, so this is going to be approximately so velocity after the seventh sprint is going to be forty eight plus five divided by seven. So this is approximately equal to fifty three divided by 7 and 53 divided by 7 is nothing but 5 7 point this is nothing but 7 point of 6 so this is 7.6 but if you notice yes the team did only 5 units of work but then Velocity has been eight units and reduced to 7.6, which means it is not a huge difference. Though the team has done three units less, this is not reducing because as the team starts progressing, this is very much similar to the run rate. What happens when the run rate will change the impacts Impacts will be a new, new wicket, new ball, or uh, any changes. 
will impact the run rate. Exactly that way, here we have a new skill being added and hence we will have an impact, but then that's, that's a planned impact, which means everybody in the team, everybody in the management knows about this planned activity. The team does spend a full, full value, but it is used towards continuous improvement. So I hope this makes sense that it is okay to have such, such work items in the sprint. The only problem is when the team starts looking at the capacity and, and the team starts uh, working with the customer where customer is expecting per hour billing and updates per hour. In that case, the customer might say that I'm not paying the team for skill improvement. I'm paying them for the functionality being developed. In such cases, this team's skill improvements or continuous improvements would become part of the management's investment to improve the team. In fact, how do you handle the situation is all about the strategy. Strategy of the team and the management strategy. So if you misunderstand the strategy and you have a wrong strategy, the, the problem with the wrong strategy impact could be that the team will be stressed stretched team may overestimate uh, or have uh, overestimation of size or they may be confused. <laughs> 